Make sure it's on. Okay, recorded on. Good day, everyone. We are happy to come back unto you. This is Yah's family who is studying the calendar. And as you, as you see before you, we have a picture with these words. And the words are the year in review. You guys say, hmm, what is that about? What is Sister Yidia leading us to review? Um, last time when we came together to study his calendar, I talked about how it's important to have a year-end summary report sheet because that sheet will help you to understand what is Enoch saying unto us. For those who have access to his writings, and the writings I'm talking about is our first, second, and third Enoch writings. Now we can see how his prophecies and those formats that was given to him, how they are coming to reality now. Okay. Another picture I would like to share with you because, like I said, with future ongoing videos, you'll probably see the video cover either with the year end reflection or the um, year end review. Okay. Again, it's very, it's very important to review the most high years in. And you'll see why as we go through Enoch's writings. Okay. So first, let's get honest to our father in heaven, Yahuwah. He is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We also give honors to his son, who is Yahushua HaMashiach, for he is the second Adam. He is the Messiah slash anointed one. He is the door slash the left. And he is the I am, slash the fountain of the living waters and the light slash eye of the body. We also give honors to our mother. Many people saying, huh, we got a mother. Yes. Remember what's done in heaven is also done in the earth. Where do the idea or concept come from of having a father and mother? Remember all things began in heaven and the earth is reflection. Of what's in heaven. Therefore, we have a mother, and she is wisdom. Okay? And the Messiah said this about our mother. In the gospel, it is written, He says that wisdom shall be justified by her children, meaning that she is not made in vain. She shall birth or bring forth the children of Yah, who are the children of light. We also bid a shalom to the bride of Yahushua HaMashiach, for you are Israelites slash Jews and Gentiles, male and females, bond and free, circumcised and uncircumcised, singing and barbarian, etc. All who receive Yahushua HaMashiach, who is the covenant, who is the salvation, who is the righteousness of Yah, those who receive him are now his bride. We also bear shalom to the 144,000. For you are only the Israelites who are chosen out of the 12 tribes of Yashariel. And you have a special assignment with the Messiah to take down the fourth beast kingdom. Yes, for my uncle Esau Edom has written covenant with Satan. This is why the dragon is red in Revelation 12. And the Gentile nations have joined him. Do y'all hear me? The Gentile nation has joined him. They were in covenant with the beast. And now we can see all the things that's happening around us. How the Bible is true. The Bible is real. Telling us we are in the fourth beast kingdom. And telling us as soon the wicked one shall bring his mark. And those who only have his mark can only buy and sell. We also bid a shalom to the nation of Israel. For the day will come, you shall bring, you shall come forth as a nation of people. You shall no longer be two sticks, for the candlesticks shall come together as one. And that would be a great and joyous day. For as, the, as our Father in heaven has prophesied unto us through his prophets today, 
telling us how the heavens and the earth grown for your manifestation, for you to be restored as a nation of people. And we can see the birth pains are increasing every day. And we can see how that prophecy will come to its fullness. So shalom, shalom, Yashuael, for soon you shall come to exist as a nation of people and no longer shall you be a bondage in fear and pain or torment or oppression against your enemies. All right, y'all. Shalom. So let's get into it. We're going to have open up in prayer. Let us face the East. I ask that my brothers, you uncover your head for you represent what the head. So to show honor, to show respect unto the Father, the Son, and the Ruach, we ask that you uncover your head. Unto my sisters, we ask that you cover your head, for it signifies you are under the power of the authority of, of Adam. Many don't understand these mysteries. Because you are under that power and authority of Adam, the angels, the evil spirits, cannot lay hand on you. Just as his servant Job, they have to go ask our father permission. So you come under those same powers, those same protection, that same authority to the female of Adam. Do you hear me? So this is why we do these things. Remember the carnal going hand with the spiritual. And those who are not able to participate in this physical act, at this time you are covered. Do you hear me? You are covered. But the day is going to come. We're going back to Torah. What the father had originally created for Adam. We're going back to that. And his prophets are the witness. I hope you are reading the King James 1611 Bible. Because I can tell for those who are not. But some is staying on one, in one part of the book and not knowing there are biblical prophecies in that whole book that has not come to its fullness. To understand what I'm saying to you now. So let us face the east. You can find it where the sun rise and where, and where the light rise in heaven. That is east. Okay. So let us face there. All right. My sister begin. Okay. Um, our father which are in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but to deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, thy power, thy glory, and, and all the above. Uh, hold on, I'm sorry. Okay, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forevermore. Hallelujah, amen. So be it. Thank you for that prayer. And again, my brothers and sisters, when you have time, study the Father's prayer. Study his prayer, for he is telling you something greatly in the prayer also. Many don't understand that he is the kingdom. He is the power and he is the glory. Many don't understand what it means for your debts to be, to be forgiven and for you to forgive your debtors. Many don't understand what it means that he will provide us with daily bread. For most are thinking carnal and not tapping into the spiritual. Meditate on that. All right, y'all, let's get into it. Let us first go into the date. Oh, no, let us first get this out of the way. Just in case if I share any copyright material with you. Remember, any copyright material I share with you is only for educational purposes only. Okay. Okay, so we're going to look at the, at, at the end. What's the purpose of us having this form called the end of the year summary report sheet? What is the purpose of that? And <clears throat> what we are learning through his prophet Enoch that we can see how our father is speaking through numbers. You know, when you learn more about him, not only do he speak through the, through the Hebrew letters, through the Hebrew words. But he also speaks through math, through science. He speaks to his witnesses, such as the heavens and the earth. He speaks to his creations, 
But a lot of us don't recognize the language, nor the signs when our father is speaking unto us. And that's because we are not connected to them. Go back to the foundation, look at the makeup of Adam, and then you understand what connected us to them. So we will be what? Having one mind. We will have their thoughts, their ways, their doctrines, their mores. Okay. But at this time, Adam, the children of Adam, is lacking that connection. Okay. So we're going to look at this form here called the end of the year summary report sheet. Okay. But first, let me take you to the calendar because you need the calendar date. This is the whole purpose of us coming together so we can know our father's calendar. Now, everybody is familiar with the heathen's calendar. And today, calendar the world father is the Gregorian calendar. And remember that it's Satan's calendar. So let me see the date first because most of us understand the heathen's date. Today's date is August the 21st in the year of 2021 A.D. Now, far as far as the phase of the day, we are in the daylight phase of the day, and it's very important to know your phases of the day, and you'll see why. Because the most high calendar is opposite, meaning that the heathen starts their day from midnight to midnight. Think about it, y'all. The heathen start their day from darkness to darkness. But the living word tells us that our Father is the Father of light. Therefore, he start his day from sundown to sundown. This is why we keep Passover starting at sundown, as well as the Day of Atonement. We keep it starting at sundown. Okay. Very different from the Hebrews. So you will learn that his calendar, as well as his year and his day, starts in between the heathen's day. Okay. And this is why it may seem a little confusing unto you because you have only been taught the ways of the heathens. Now, the month we're in, we are in the fifth month. And in the Babylonian tongue, they would say, I think it's Babylonian. If not, correct me. This may be Hebrew. But it, they, they call this month A, A, right here. So, yeah, it's a Babylonian term I have in my notes. OK, and there are so important biblical events. I did forget to mention in the calendar report that on the first day of the new moon, this is when you had Aaron to die in the wilderness. You remember what the father told them? They shall wander in the wilderness for 40 years and that generation would not enter into the land of milk and honey. So Aaron died in this month on the first day of the fifth month. OK, another biblical event is that Ezra, the high priest Ezra, came to Jerusalem. OK, so that's some things you can check out in Ezra chapter seven, verse nine. As far as Aaron, you can check that out in Numbers chapter 33, verse 38. Now for the date. I don't know about y'all, but I saw the moon last night. It was so beautiful. Very beautiful. You can see the man in the moon. And believe it or not, the prophet of Yah talks about it. Yes. Again, remember what the Messiah say about the prophet. He has given you the prophets, Israelites and Gentiles. It's up to you to listen. Stop falling behind some Israelites and some Gentiles. You need to seek out the prophet's writings. That is what's going to save you and justify you when the father judge all his creations. Okay. We are in the second week of the most high calendar in the fifth month known as A. Okay. So we will fall in day 12, day 12. Okay. For day 12 is the date of the moon or the date of the month. For as the date of the sun, the sun is in its fifth month. And 30th day. The sun is in its fifth month and 30th day. Notice that the moon day don't start on the same day the sun. Why? Again, we'll talk about that when we look at this report sheet. But for those who are to know, you understand that in the moon circuit, the moon circuit have fewer days than the sun circuit. That's why. OK, 
okay? So remember, the date of the sun would be different from the date of the moon. However, these three lights, the sun, the moon, and Maslow come together to form one calendar, just as the Elohim head. They come together to work as what? One family or one divine family in heaven or as one divine government in heaven. Mysteries, many that don't understand. As far as the date of the heathen, the father day would fall on August the 20th at sundown to August the 21st at sundown. So y'all seeing that the next day to follow, which is day 13 of the moon, this is where we have a full moon day. And that's another unusual sign. Again, when the father gives me more information, why this is so, besides, you know, one of the prophecies that I had seen that the moon would not show at her point in time. And this and this is probably why it is happening. But when the father gives me more information, I will share it with you. Okay. On that. Because according to Enoch's writings, we learned that a full moon day is on the 14th day and the 15th day. Another proof for this is looking at the four blood moons that we had in the year of 2014 to 2015, where we saw that Passover and the first day of Feast of Tabernacles started on a full moon day, and that full moon day was a blood moon day. And there's many other um, confirmation of this too. But again, as you see, the writings of the prophet is lining up to the witnesses that he had. And the witnesses I'm talking about is heaven and earth. Everything go hand in hand together. So take this time now to pause your screen. Okay. Now, far as the year, we are in the eighth day of Adam. Okay. And that eighth day of Adam, when you convert it into Yahuwah's time, it starts in the 7,000 first year to the 8,000 year. Now, when I convert that into the date of creation, it, it will fall in the 13th day of creation. And the 13th day of creation, when you convert it in Yahuwah's time, it starts in the 13,000th year, in it in 13,999. Far as the date of Enoch's 10 week prophecy, I have us be in the eighth week of Enoch's 10 week prophecy. Again, remember what the Messiah said. His people will know what season we are in, what time we are in. Far as the seven-day prophecy, yes, there is a seven-day prophecy. It's a mystery on that. Okay. We, for so far, for what I remember on the top of my head, you know, from the top of my memory, I have us being in the fifth day, the fifth day. So everything's lining up, y'all. We don't have much time. Soon the Father, eternal kingdom will be here. So now that you have the date, big difference from what the heathens are giving us. Remember, saying that his people don't play fair, okay? They don't play fair. They want you to be caught off your guard. They don't want you to receive your inheritance, Adam, as well as to the Israelites. They want you to join them in Sheol, in hell. And we know the day will come, Sheol will be placed into the eternal lake of fire. Now that we have that out of the way. So family, last time, I know I, um, I did a video on the year in totals for 2020 to 2021. And in that video, I forgot to point this out. And I'm so thankful that the father brought this to my attention. There's a pattern for those who keep record that you would see that the moon would do from year to year to year, okay? All right? And when you compare the new moon date for the, for the year, for, for the new year, from like from year to year to year. Now, I know in this year, we added a 13 month, so you may not see it right away. So that's why I bought it in the year of 2019 to 2020. Let's take a look. Let me scroll to the top and we'll come back to this section here. You'll see why. Now that there is an interview, there is a year of an end report for the year of 2019 to 2020. You can watch that video that's on the channel. But 
let me see here what I'm looking at. Because it was something I saw with a pattern here. See, that's four, six. Yeah, okay. In the year of 2019 to 2020, 2020, excuse me, y'all, my tone. Notice the date of the moon when it started, okay? In that year, it was cited on April the 6th in the year of 2019 AD. Then when we get in the year of 2020 to 2021, notice this date. It started on March the 25th in the year of 2020. Now, I can show y'all a ton of sheets, but what I'm pointing out to you, just comparing those two years, notice how the moon is starting early as the year go by. Okay? Now, you can you can also do this same sheet or this same record with the, those one who only follow the sun for the year. Now, you might not see a big difference, by the way, but I, what, what we had just learned from one of the calendar sessions we had, we also learned that the solar year will also move up. Yeah. So some people, what we're finding out are not being truthful with you. They are changing up or switching dates on you. And this is why it's so important for you to keep their records to see what they're actually doing. Because what we have learned that some people are not being honest. They're not being honest. And what I'm saying to you, if they saying that this day is the sun year's date, and they also saying that this is the date of the equinox, hold them accountable to what they say. Keep a record because I'm telling y'all, math don't lie. Math don't lie. And a lot of people ain't gonna put that stuff on paper. And they're not going to go back and reflect or go over with you from the previous years because a lot of people want you to follow them. OK, they want you to be dependent on them for the calendar. But at the same time, I'm going to use this word. This is a layman word. They're going to hug with you. They're not going to be honest. They're not going to say we noticing that even with the sun. It's moving up, just like the moon is moving up. Now, look at this number again. I'm going to point this out. Let me highlight it right here. Okay, my computer acting slow. There we go. In the year of 2020 to 2021, notice that the new moon was sighted on March the 25th in the year of 2020. When we look at 2019 to 2020, notice that the moon was sighted in April on the sixth day in the year of 2019 AD. So this is already showing you that as the year go by, if you don't add a 13th month, the moon will continue to move up. Okay. For example, as we see here, it started in March. Okay in the year of 2020 to 2021. And in the year prior, it has started in April. So it's showing you a pattern, it's showing you a trend. And I hope y'all pick that up. If not, we can keep going over the sheet, okay? Oh, next thing before I go to the next sheet. And this is why it's so important to follow Enoch formulas. He talks about the lunar EPAC. The lunar EPAC is very important because the lunar EPAC formula is going to tell you when the heaven is going to produce a 13th moon. See, this has nothing to do with man's hand. It's going to tell you the exact year when the heaven is going to produce that 13th moon to keep her in, to keep her in a line with the seasons. Again, the he's, who is the sun, and Maseroth will keep the moon in line with the seasons, okay? And because of all these numbers or because of how these lights are working together, when they give the um, signal or information, like I said, all these things are done by spirit, then the moon would know I need to produce an extra moon for that year, 
all done under the command of our Father in heaven. Okay? So when you do the lunar EPAC, what the lunar EPAC is, you're taking the, the total number of days that the moon have in this year, subtracting from the total number of days the sun had in its year. So in that year of 2019 to 2020, you have the sun having 366 days. Notice that with the heathens, I, and I can go back, I guarantee the heathens would not have that in their year because they don't follow the heavens. The day that they say they have 366 days, y'all, it's according to their calendar because their calendar is fixed. They don't look at the heavens and they don't go by the heavens. They don't follow Genesis 1.14. This is why the most high calendar numbers will be different from their numbers as you compare each year. Okay. Now, for the total number of days the moon had in that year was 354 days. I'm right here in this section. So when I look at the moon just first 12 months, I'm not looking at that 13th month, but in the first 12 months, I'm comparing the total number of days of the moon to the sun. And when I subtract these two numbers, 366 minus 354, I get 12 days difference. And by the having this information, we'll determine when the moon will start its new year. And as you see, if I compare April the 6th, going back up, if I compare April the 6th to March the 25th, you're going to see a 12-day difference. So let's pull a calendar up so you can see that, see what I'm talking about. April 2019 calendar. Next, we're going to pull up is in March 2020 calendar. Okay. Now, looking at this number, go back to my sheet. <clears throat> when I did this sheet, I'm saying that the moon would start 12 days early in the next coming year. So when I compare the year of 2019 to 2020, the moon would start 12 days early. So it would come before April the 6th. Okay. All right. It would come before April the 6th in a March uh, 2020 calendar. And I'm going to have to pull up an April 2020 calendar just to compare. Okay, very important you get your year right, too. Everything got lined up. So in the year of April the 20, 20, you have the new moon being sighted on this day at sundown. So let's see how many days different it is from um, March the 25th in the year of, um, make sure I look at the right thing. Yeah, we're going to see how many days different it is from April to March. So I'm going from April the 6th to March the 25th. <clears throat> so I start counting backwards. Okay, April the 6th is one, y'all. Okay, that's where I'm starting at. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's six days, okay, in April. Now we're going to March. We might count at six. So the 31st of March will be seven. Seven, eight, 
9, 10, 11, 12. That's, that's right on time. Right on time. Because the new moon started on March the 25th in the year of 2020. So it's 12 days difference. Remember, 12 day difference don't give you the total number between March the 25th and to April 6th. I'm not giving you the total number. I'm giving you the difference between those two days. And the difference between those two days are 12 days. So that's right on the money. Right on the money. Because if I add 12 days to this 25th day, let's add it, okay? So I'm adding 12 days, right, to this. So the next day would be one, day one, because I'm adding 12 days to this day. Remember, I'm not looking at totals. I'm looking at difference when you do math. So March the 26th would be day one, two, three, four, five, six. And when I go to April, so that will take me to April, y'all. When I go to April, that first day of April would be seven. Okay, then eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So the 12th day falls on April the 6th. This is why it's so important that we look at our year in totals because it's going to line up to the prophecies of what Enoch is giving us in all his writings. Remember, we have to look at all his writings. I see many fail. What they do, they only look at the first writings. They don't even go to the second writings knowing that there have been updates made or changes made by the Most High Yah. Okay? This is whether those who keep record of the moon or those who only keep record of the sun. However, the, the, the family of Yah, we follow the whole, the whole shebang. Okay? We follow the sun, the moon, and Maserat. We follow the three lights. That is the difference with us versus everybody else. Okay? So whether they are following one or the other light, according to your report sheet, anybody can do a report sheet on anybody. All you need is their calendar records. You can see whether they are starting their year correctly because some people be skipping days or omitting days and trying to make it seem like they keep in what, 364 days? But when you add up their calendar dates, they're not. Or some people say, well, I'm keeping the, the 354 or the 355 and you added the calendar days, then I. This is what the sheep is going to do. It's going to help you see things clearer. OK, so with my family. We're going to look at this year, this year sheet. OK, so I'm going to close this on out. And what I like about this sheet. <clears throat> and when you click on it, I am keeping record of those. I'm not saying everybody, but from what I've seen, I see some of the Israelites are falling behind the your hat. They are taking their word on when to start the year. But when you study the even the your hat calendar records, because yes, I got their calendar records too. You would see they don't follow Enoch's 358 rule, they follow something else. So I don't understand why some Israelites are falling behind these people. I don't get it. But anyway, I'm keeping record because like I told y'all, what I noticed about some Israelites, they're not being honest with y'all. Okay? They're not telling you the truth. They are, if for example, I'm going to use this year. When we added a 13th month for the year of 2015 to 2016, a lot of Israelites did not. So as y'all see, we are now in the year of 2021. So about six years has passed. OK, now in that six year, y'all, it's, it's enough proof and evidence to show you there is a 13th month. But what I seen with some Israelites, they're going to still de de denounce it. But all of a sudden they are with us. And what I mean is when you look at their calendar records now, they are following us. OK, they are saying they're in the same month with us. That is impossible because if they're keeping to their doctrines of believing there's no 13th month, that is impossible. For example, because they didn't add it at 13th month, they would be oh, in their first month 
when we in our 13th month for the year of 2015 to 2016. So when 2018 to 20, 2019 come, they will be in their second month while we in our first month of that new year. Do y'all see that? They are getting what? A month ahead of us. Okay. Which will cause their Passover to start in winter. So when you get in the year of 2020 to 2021, our first month would be their third month now. And this is going to continue, y'all, because they didn't add that 13th month. So in the year of 2021 to 2022, they should be in their fourth month. But I have seen some lying, perpetrating. All of a sudden, they're lying with us. So for this year, for those who are listening to the Yahad, because they're going by their body report, and even I saw the body, y'all, it wasn't ripened. It was still green. Because the Father had told us through his heavens and through his earth and through the prophet Enoch's writings that the heavens will produce a 13th moon. It was, The body is not going to be ripened. But many listen to this Yahad report and follow behind them. So it's going to be interesting to see if they're going to add that 13th month in the year of 2022 to 2023. It's going to be very interesting. However, they're not going to be under the 358 rule, y'all. They're going to be following 368 rule. And that's not right. That was not given to the prophets. Okay? So I do keep a record of that. I just want to see what they're going to do. Are they going to admit it? Or they just gonna act like are oh, well, would they address it, or would they perpetrate and act like they was along with us? Very interesting. So to my family, um the form was sent out to you where you can look over. Now I know it's not the same as this form because um I add a little more things I keep up with, like I show people a comparison or what the fourth beast have in their year, how they are way ahead in, in the sun year. They're not correct in comparison to what we have. I also keep up with the Yahad and with Brother Hashur, you know, what they have. So, you know, my form is going to be a little more heavy with information, but I do it for a reason because that way our people can learn the calendar for themselves and see what is correct because everything has to line up. This is like doing a checkbook, y'all. Your numbers have to balance themselves. Okay. So the first question you're going to ask, where do I get all these numbers from? This is why it's so important to keep a calendar record. Let me see. Can I find that link? Let me go there. Okay. This is why it's so important to keep a calendar record. Now, for this year, because we added a 13th month in the year of 20, uh, 20 to 2021, this is why the new moon started in April and not in March. Okay, big difference. However, as you see, Israel did not keep a 13th month. They're going to start in March the 14th. Which brings me to this, y'all. Okay, because I'm going to give you this. The lunar EPAD for that year of 2020 to 2021 was 11 days difference. By me knowing this information, what day make, I'm not gonna say it, I'm not for sure yet till I get close to that time. What day may they start their, it is gonna be their first month or their 13th month in March. Do I have anybody willing to volunteer? to take a guess at it, family. And I'm going to pull something to help you out. Let's go to time and date. Let's go to time and date. Now, these are projections. This is not like confirming you got know me. I like to cite what's in here to see if it matches what is projected. So when we go to time and day, on the moon basis. Okay. As you see, I'm under a rod in Israel. Okay. 
And this is for you of 2021, but we're going to look at 2022. These are just projections. We know in order for the new moon day to be sighted, we have to, well, to find out what day can the new moon be sighted, we have to look at the moon phase when she is dark. When, she's no, when there's no light upon her, okay? So when we look at in the year of 2022 AD, and we look at the dark moon that would fall in March, it falls in March the 2nd at 7.34 p.m., okay? Now, according to this time, when this phase happened, more than likely, they will only be able to see the new moon on March the 3rd at sundown. Okay, these are projections. And I have my lunar EPEG, okay, that I did for the year of 2020 to, um, I'm sorry, let me make sure I get my year right. Yeah, I have my lunar EPEG for the year of 2020 to 2021, which is 11 days difference. By me knowing this information at this time, like I said, don't take this as the final because I like to get to the end of the year. At this time, what that lunar EPEC is telling me, y'all, that the moon is 11 days ahead of the sun, meaning that the moon is starting 11 days ahead. Now, because Israel did not add a 13th moon, you're going to really see this. Now, we added a 13th moon. You're not going to really see it because we have a bank of days. We have a bank of dates, okay? So if I subtract, because remember, it's starting ahead, so it's taking away. If I subtract 14 from a, I mean, if I subtract 14, this is March the 14, the year of 2020, 2021 AD. If I subtract 14 from 11, I get three. Is that, is that what y'all get, family? Can y'all hear me? Yes. Okay. So by me subtracting 11 from March the 14th, I would get March the 3rd. And already looking at the moon projections, these are moon projections, like projected dates. We see that the dark moon will only start on March the 2nd at 734 p.m. So we already know the sun would be going down, you know, on that day. And there's no way possible to see a new moon crescent because there's no light upon her. She's in her dark phase. So more than likely, they won't be able to see the moon or the new moon day or the new moon crescent until March the 3rd at sundown. Now, already looking at March the 3rd, I'm just going to put this out here. Going back to the sheet, we know the equinox day of the sun falls usually in March, right? March the... um. Either it could be the 20th, 23rd. Remember, it's going to vary from year to year. But according to the next year, it'll start March the 20th. So when you compare March the 3rd to March 20th, it's way ahead of equinox, meaning that the body is not going to have enough time to be ripened. Remember, the body has to turn from green to brown. It has to be dried out in order for us to harvest the seed from its husk. To make bread. You, now everything is lining up. So I'm going to tell y'all. They're going to have to add a 13th month. In order for the body to be ripened. But when they add a 13th month. They're already behind. In other words. They're already out of order. Because they should have added it. In this year. In the year of 2021. But they're going to have to add it. If they don't. Huh, body is not going to be ripened. And as the years go by, their Peshat is going to start in winter. Passover is going to start in winter as time, you know, go on from year to year. And it's going to be interesting to see what some of my Israelite brothers and sisters are going to do. For those who don't read Enoch's writings or don't accept it, as well as the other prophets, as well as the other sacred books. It's going to be very interesting to see what they do. 
And I'm going to tell y'all, y'all, y'all need to take pictures and keep their records because when you confront them about it, these people ain't going to be honest with you. They're going to hope and pray that you're not paying attention. That's what they're going to hope. And you can do this the same thing with those who are the solar keepers or, or the sun keepers. You can do the same thing with their records too. Because they're not going to be honest with you. Okay. So be interested in what they're going to do next year. So as you see by doing this sheet, it's going to help you to see what Jubilees is saying to us. How those keep record, we're going to see that the moon come in 10 days too soon. Now, I know why there's 11 days. And it go, and it deals with second Enoch, when you read his writings. Because everything was based upon his age, when he was in the heavens, and how many books he wrote. We're going to see, you know, that connection. Or why some things change. Okay? But even in first Enoch, what the father shared with me, he said, notice that I had some of the months of the moon to be 29 days and not 30. I said, you did, Father. And then uh, when I share with y'all the form of the breakdown, when we compare the days of the moon to the days of the sun, I got 29.5. And when you go in the Gentile records, they would get about, what, I think 29.5 or something like that. But it was already in the prophet's writings. I thought that was amazing. So everything is lining up. So by doing this summer sheet, it's going to help you see things a lot clearer. You won't have to keep going through the calendar to get your numbers. It's more concise. Okay. Which brings me to this. I needed to pull up the calendar record. So the next thing you're probably going to ask, where do I get these numbers? I get all these numbers from my calendar sheet. That's where I get it from. Okay. And as you see, with the calendar record, it's so much information up there, y'all. It's going to be harder for you to see what I'm sharing with you now. This is why I do that in a, in a report sheet. Also, it, it helped me to make sure I have no errors. In other words, you know how we are. We are Adam. We are human. So it's easy for us to make a mistake. Or, you know, to leave our day or to have the incorrect day. It's easy to do. And that's when the sheet comes in. It's like your checkbook. It's going to help you balance your checkbook. That's what that sheet does. Okay. Let me see. I'm about there. It takes a little while. So, for example, how I get my numbers. The days of moon. That's real simple, y'all. Now I'm going to look at the whole days. Okay. Excuse my phone, y'all. That was letting me know. It's actually 12 noon, not p.m., but you know we're in daylight saving time because of the heathens. So to get the day of the moon, I just go to my calendar sheet and I look at how many days the moon have that month. You have to bear with this thing, y'all. It's going to so let me decrease the size a little bit. Just be patient with it. So those who are just beginning, I don't see your, your sheet to be in detail, but I want you to get in the habit of looking at how many days the moon had in this month. How many days the sun had in this month. This Told it is at the end of the year, and that will help you to understand Enoch's formulas. Okay, so I see this is going to take a while to upload, so we'll come back to it. So, this is how I'm able to get what I get on the sheet. For example, when we look at spring. When we look at moon, in the first month, the moon had 29 days. In the second month, it had 30. 
In the third month, it had 29. And I would do the same with the sun. In its first month, it has 31. Second month, 31. Third month, 31. Now, I'm aware what first Enoch's writings say, but people need to read second Enoch's writings. Okay? And even when you go and observe the heavens, you would get the same thing. What I have been noticing from keeping record for a while, that our father give us an extra day in spring and in summer, which makes sense because we have to prepare for winter. And I noticed that when we get in winter, the winter days are shortened. So that way, at the end of the year, when all the days of the sun is added up, it come out to be about 365 or 366. It still bounces itself out. Okay. So this is where I'm getting the numbers. As far as looking at actual numbers, the reason why I look at actual numbers, because it's going to help you to understand what Jubilees is saying unto you, what Enoch is saying unto you, when you look at the exact timing of the sun and moon. Now, unfortunately, the Gentiles don't follow the uh, new moon crescent. So the actual timing of the moon is just an estimate, y'all. Okay. Now, with the sun, because of the resources I go to, I don't expect it to be exact. So at the end of the year, what I do is I look at time and date, actual timing of the sun, which we fall under tropical year. Because tropical year is going to look at the actual circuit of the sun. And it's going to, it's going to come close to what Enoch has written about the sun. Because the law was made in heaven. It said that the sun has 365.25 days. However, that 0.25 is not added until the fourth year. Because if you add it as it goes, it's going to throw things off in its alignment. So it's like the 0.25 is put in a bank. So when the fourth year come, that's when the 0.25s are added up, which would give us 366 days. That's why. Okay. So even looking at the exact timing, we help you understand. Now, I noticed lately that time and date has finally started giving you the actual timing of spring. OK, the actual timing of spring, such as you see here in this picture, I got it from that site. I just took a big picture of it right here. That's what I did, which is very important that you can see the breakdown of what I'm talking about. Notice how the father gives you extra days in the spring and summer in comparison to winter, because we know in the first writings we will, we should get, I believe is what? 92, 92, 92, 92. Let me make sure that's right. Because in the first writing, it was talking about 364. So 92 times 4, no, that'd be 368. It has to be, I think, 91. Yeah, 91 times 4 would be 364. However, you see that things has changed now because the father is giving us extra an extra day in spring and summer to do our work notice how the adjustment made in fall and winter so when you add all this up you should either get 365 and a quarter or 366 i'll come close to that so i notice that time and day is start doing that now which is good because i can compare my numbers i don't expect my numbers to match it exactly because like i said to get the exact timing when the sun entered into each sign of Maseroth, y'all, it's kind of hard because I'm using the Gentiles' sites. Unfortunately, um, that's, I, I'm not aware of any Israelites that's actually doing that, giving me the exact timing. And it's a way to do it because the other area that I see that some Israelites are doing, they're looking at side wheel side wheel and you cannot use side wheel because side wheel is going to lead you to a 13th constellation which is dealing with the serpent according to the prophets even in job we are to follow the 12 signs not the 13 signs this is where they err okay so i follow tropical so the information i have is like a just an estimate y'all so this is why i compare the data that i have to time of day tropical year 
Okay. And I think I have it on this form so you can see what I'm talking about. I know I have seasons listed. Think tropical, you'll be further down. Let me go down here. No, I don't have it on this form. But it's going to be added to this form. But time and date has the tropical year giving you the exact dates and time of the sun circuit. So you can compare your numbers. Okay. But my most important concern when I fill out the sheet is looking at my calendar whole days. Calendar whole days are different from actual timing. Calendar whole days cannot show you the actual timing or the actual circuit of the sun and the moon. So this is why, again, I have two separate columns for that. So we can compare. Okay. So in the first season, as you see in the year of 2021 to 2022, which is spring, when you add up these totals, and I forgot to add up this total here for my moon. Let me get that for you right quick. Which is very important because Enoch says something very important in his writings. He talks about the moon having a certain number of days in the six months of this year. So I get 88 here. Then for Israel, let me see what they get. Let's remember, they are a month ahead of us right now because they didn't add a 13th month. Well, so for the first, second, and third month, they may have 89 days. Okay. I put that down note so you know where that total is coming from. But Brother Hashur, he would have 89. And so far, we would have 88. Okay. Then we look at exact timing of the moon. All I'm doing is adding these numbers together. Okay. So far, I get, if I did my math correctly, for exact time in the moon, the moon has 88 days, 22 hours, and 46 minutes. And I will be coming back checking my math on that. Okay? So this is where I get these numbers. Let me see if the calendar pulled up. So when you open up your calendar record, as far as getting the days of the moon, I'm talking about calendar whole days, you will look on your calendar and go to the end of that month. And you would get your days of the moon. So you look at if your moon had 29 days or 30 days. And Enoch do talk about this. He does. As far as my son, again, as you see here, for the first month, the moon had 29 days. If the moon had 30 days, you would see me have a number like I do here. It would have 30 days here. Okay. As far as the days, count the whole days now. It's the difference what I'm saying. Count the whole days. As far as the days of my son, what I would look at is, that's why I number each day of the sun. I look at what's my son's final day for that month. 
see, can I find it? For example, for the second month of the sun, we fall in the second month of the moon. And as you see here, for the sun's second month, it had a total of 31 days. So that's how I get my numbers for the moon and the sun. For as actual timing of these, I have to go to another website to get that information. But as far as the days of the sun, the moon, as whole days, all you have to do is go out and observe the heavens and count your days. Walk it out. Okay? That's where I get this information. So I take all this information I got from this sheet and I plug it on a summary sheet here. And I make very important notes. So it's easy for me to find the information when I have to pull my calendar sheet work. This is how it, I stay organized. And this is how I also make sure that I made no errors in the calendar. It's very easy to see. So that's the first season of this year that we're in. Now we're in the second season on the summer. So as you see here, I can only fill in what I have on my calendar. So for the sun's fourth month, it had 30 days. For the sun's um, fifth month, it would have, no, for the sun's fourth month, it would have 31 days. And as you see here, for the sun's fifth month, it would have 32 days. So I'm going to count the whole days, okay? And as I get close to the end of that season, remember each season we have three months, a fourth, fifth, and sixth month. Okay, each season, that's how the father divided it. And if I had any type of light event in the heaven, and light event I'm talking about is a blood moon, solar eclipse, super moons, micro moons, partial lunar eclipse, I just write down how many I have for that season because these are all signs unto us. And those who are the children of light will understand what these signs are. However, the heathen would be, we would, would be dismayed they would not have no understanding of this or what those lights mean. Just like with blood moons. If you understand what a blood moon means, it means judgment is coming. If you have not repented for your transgressions and sin, you will pay in blood. You will be put to death. Okay. So at this time, I'm working on the second season, which is the sun. All right. So once I get all this filled in, as we go through each season, then when we get to the end of the sheet. This is where we deal with our tallies. I write down if we had a 13th month and how many days in that month. This information though with tropical year, I pull it from time and date. Okay. Time and date. That's where I get that information from. Then I do my grand total for each column. And then I have a final line to, to giving me my finalized number. But notice here with the heathens, they start way in advance too in their year. There was a time when they started from March to March, but Constantine changed all that. They now start the beginning of the year in winter, which makes no sense. Backwards. And this is why you have their months being ahead of us. So for example, when I compare their days of the sun, to the actual days of the sun that we have, you will see in the third month, they are ahead 151 days. But we have, what, 93 days. Way ahead. They are out of order. Out of order. Okay? So again, this summer sheet is just to help you see things clear and to also to make sure you have no errors. Now, this is a part we want to get to. First Enoch chapter 78, verse 15 through 17 and chapter 79. That's what you want to look at. And I'm not going to go over in this video. Well, if I can pull it up, I will. Let me pull it up. And we're just going to read chapter 78, verse 15 through 17. Let me see, can I pull it up in this tab?
I know what to do. Okay, thank you, Father. I'm going to have to go to sacredtext.com. Because this browser don't have my PDF saved. It's a different browser. So we're going to go to Charles Translations today. I usually use those up translations, but they are close to same. Okay, I'm in the book of Enoch by R.H. Charles. Okay, and we're going to look at chapter 78. I believe we started at verse 15, and this one is a little bit different. For my book set up. Oh, I'm in 58. That's why. Let me go back. I looked at my numbers wrong. Okay, this is 77. I need 78. Okay. Let me see where I can start at. Okay, I had to go to the next chapter. The numbers are really different from my book. Yeah, I think, let me see. Give me a minute, y'all. I'm going to find it. I believe that set up from my book is a little different from mine. Yep, it is, because I have more verses in that chapter. Let's see. Oh, that's 79. That's why. Sorry about that, y'all. Let me just. I see 77. It keeps, okay, it's jumping. So let me go back to the end. I need 78. Okay, I clicked on 78, but it took me to 77. Let me try again. See, it's taking me to 77, and it won't take me to 78. Well, I'm going to have to go to 79 then. Wait a minute. Okay, it took me to 77, but 78 is from what I see. Let me make sure. This might be part of it. But anyway, it's kind of screwed up. <laughs> but the most important thing, I get me the way I need. Okay. Read a one. Read verse 15 through... Uh-uh, I don't want that because it's not going to mention what I want. Oh, yes, it does. Okay, I see it. I'm going to have to figure out how to hide this thing. Let me see, can I move this thing out? Wait, there we go. And I'm going to blow this up so those who are watching the video can follow along. Reader one, can you read for me what's highlighted in the paragraph? And let me blow this up too. It's not large enough. Okay, I'm ready, reader one. 
Okay. It says in three months, she makes of 30 days. And at her time, she makes three months of 29 days each. And when she accomplished her waning in the first period of time, in the first portal for 177 days. And at the time of her going out, she appears for three months, 30 days each. And for three months, she appears 29 each. At night, she appears like a man for 20 days each time. And by day, she appears like, um, oh yeah. Okay, it appears like the heaven and there's nothing else in her save her light. Okay, read verse 17 for me again. It says, at night, she appears like a man for 20 days each time. And by day, she appears like the heaven and there's nothing else in her save her light. Okay, this verse y'all that I'm, I'm sharing with y'all today this can be witnessed in the heavens. It can be observed. But for today, for this class section, what we're going to tune in on is verse 15. But verse 15 is telling us something very important. It says that, I'm going to start reading at the beginning of it. It says, in three months, she makes of 30 days. And at her time, she makes three months of 29 days each in which she accomplished her waning, meaning that she's what? She's going, to she's going to decrease in her light in the first period of time, in the first quarter for 177 days. Now, when I did the calendar report sheet, summer sheet, I don't have to go to one that's already done. I seen this number, y'all. I seen it. And by doing this summary in a report sheet, like looking at your year in totals, it's going to help you to understand what Enoch is talking about in chapter 78, verse 15 through 17 and chapter 79. So let me open up. I'm going to close the calendar. Let's see here. I'm going to close this calendar. And let me open up an inner year report summary sheet for the prior year. We're gonna go here. We're gonna go to 2020 to 2021. And uh, he's saying a lot in those verses, y'all. I see those things in the heaven. I see how she looked like the heaven, and I seen the man in the and, and I seen the man in her. Today we said the man in the moon. Okay, that is something to meditate on. I'm not gonna elaborate on it today. But <laughs> we can see how these things are true, very true right before our eyes. So when I did my calendar report summary sheet, notice this, y'all, for the year of 2020 to 2021, that's highlighted in the blue. We are in the summer season. Let me scroll up so you can see what I'm talking about. We are in the second season. So this is the half of the year. This is the sixth month of the moon. And notice that I get 177 days. 177 days. And these months are a mixture of 29 days and 30 days. 29 days and 30 days, as y'all see. Also, what I notice when I get to the end of my year, if I take 177 times 2, I got 354, 354 right here, 177, we'll highlight that in yellow, times two, I got 354, 354. So not only in the first month, and I mean, not only in the first six months, I know she's 177 days, but proceeding after that, an, an additional of 177 days added to that, I get 354. 354. And this is with up to the 12th month. That's what I'm talking about. I'm not adding the 13th month, but dealing with the 12th month. Notice that I get 354. So I'm not going to go in full details. I just want to point that out to y'all. 
because that's another thing you should be looking for in your calendar records to see if you get into 177 for the six months. And we're going to break down when that should happen because he's given us a timing of this when this when this is going to happen. And another clue he's given us that your calendar months of the moon should consist of 29 and 30 days. Now we're talking about whole calendar days. Okay, something to really think about. Okay. So this will conclude this lesson. And let me show y'all the tropical gear. I have it in this, and I'm gonna add it to my other sheet. Let me copy this. So I have it in my other sheet so you can see what I'm talking about. <laughs> But this is what I'm talking about on timeofdate.com. They have a section. It's going to be under astronomy. And then under astronomy, you'll find tropical year. And it gives you the exact timing of the sun's circuit. Very important to know because you're going to see how it lines up with the prophet's writings. It lines up on the money. Okay. So let me add it to this sheet here. I'm going to put it above. To my family, do you have any questions in regarding with this sheet? Um, I'm still learning. I just need to uh, get a, 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 a copy of the sheet. Okay. So let me ask you this. With the form that I sent you, does it help for you to see what I'm talking about with the checks and balances? Yeah, so far. Mm -hmm. Okay. Also, does it help you to see what Enosh is talking about and what Moshe was talking about in Jubilees, how the moon start before the sun? Yes. And that's what I want you to grasp. I want you to grasp what they wrote unto us, how it's shown in reality. This is what people are not understanding or grasping. They don't understand that these writings can be witnessed in the heaven and earth. In other words, you can go out and see these things happen right before your eyes. And what's going to help you when you keep a calendar record? This is why Moshe read and he said that those who observe would notice this. And we see this because we are keeping record. We are watching time. We are paying attention as the Messiah told us. He told us what to watch and pray. So we won't be caught off guard when that day comes. So again, family, do you have any other questions with this sheet? No. Okay. So those who are watching, I hope that this um, calendar session helps you to understand Again, why we keep record, why we're watching. I hope that this form here will give you more insight or help to understand those mathematical formulas. Because I know, you know, math ain't for everybody. When I say math ain't for everybody, it's not everybody's um, favorite subject, you know. But I hope what I present unto you helps you to understand it. That's what I'm looking at to help you understand it because the time has come for you not to be dependent on those who want people to follow them. Because when you read the living word, the living word is teaching us this. You are to follow the spirit, not man, for man is flesh. This is why the father in heaven took away the Levitical priesthood. He also took away the kings of Israel. Because when you learn our history, they was misleading the flock. They was misleading the sheep. So in place of that for right now, this is just a temporary placement. In place of that for right now, he has given us his spirit, who is the comforter, who is Yahushua's spirit. He has given us him to be our teacher, our master, our shepherd, do y'all see where I'm going with this? So you will not be led astray. So when the day of judgment comes, you have no excuse. You have no excuse. 
because as the words say, we have to work out our own salvation. So we have no excuse in this day and time. As far as reading, I know some people, that's not one of their favorite things. Guess what? In this time of technology, we have uh, we have sites or we can go to YouTube and listen to these books audibly. So we have no excuse. As far as math, I, I just shared with y'all last week. You can go to the time and date site here and it can calculate the day for you as long as you put in the correct date. So there's things to help you. Again, we have peace. All these things are at our fingertips. As Prophet Dan, he said, what knowledge we're in to and fro. So we have no excuse. Where we are weak in one area, the Father would give us a resource or a tool or a person to point the way for you so you can do these things yourself. So you won't be misled. OK, because I'm telling you, all these people out here are wicked. They are very wicked. They want to mislead you. And it's time to stop. It is time to stop. OK. We have no excuse. We have his comforter. This is why the Messiah said, I'm always with you to the ends of the world. All right. So. Remember this, continue to preach that the kingdom of heaven is at hand for it's true at hand. Make sure the people receive salvation as written in Romans chapter 10 and baptize the people in the name of Yahushua HaMashiach for the Lamb set the example of the water baptism and the Holy Spirit baptism and the apostle continued them both. And if you have no one to baptize you, guess what? You can do it yourself. Exercise your faith with works. For the water is the second witness in the earth, just like his heavens and his earth is a witness unto him. And they can report back unto him who had entered into the covenant. For when you read the sacred books, you will learn he poured his spirit upon all his creation and they are all connected to him. The only one that's out of order is us. Adam. And the same is with the Holy Spirit. For those who want to receive the Holy Spirit baptism, our Father can give it unto you. You don't have to go to a synagogue or to an assembly or to a church building. We stop putting the Father in the box. He can give it to you at any place at any time. But he give it unto you according to your heart, your faith, and word. For those who want it, ask in the name of Yahushua HaMashiach, it shall be given unto you as written according to your heart, your faith, and words. And we bid y'all shalom. And we love you all.